Liz Truss, NATO should protect Taiwan. Japan finds case of mysterious children's liver disease. U.S. passes bill to help Taiwan regain WHO status. Hello, I'm Wade Lee. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. It is April 29th, Friday, and here are your top stories. Britain's Foreign Secretary Liz Truss on April 27th said the UK rejects the false choice between Euro-Atlantic security and Indo-Pacific security in favor of a global NATO. Truss said we need to preempt threats in the Indo-Pacific, working with allies like Japan and Australia to ensure that the Pacific is protected. We must ensure that democracy like Taiwan are able to defend themselves. Her remarks come amid fear of false choice that could embolden China to act aggressively against Taiwan. According to the transcript of the speech of Liz Truss on the UK's foreign policy on April 27th, she said, In the modern world, NATO needs both Euro-Atlantic security and Indo-Pacific security. NATO must have a global outlook, ready to tackle global threats. NATO must ensure democracies like Taiwan are able to defend themselves. Trust said, three years ago, Vladimir Putin said Western liberalism was dead. Last year, President Xi argued that the West is declining. In April 2022, things looked very different. We will win this new era for peace, security and prosperity. Japan has detected the first probable case of a mysterious liver disease that has so far affected over 170 children, largely in Britain. Japan's health minister said on April 26 that a child has been hospitalized with an unidentified type of severe acute hepatitis. It is thought to be the first reported case in Asia. The new case from Japan tested negative for adenovirus and coronavirus, though officials have not revealed other details. The common sites of hepatitis include jaundice, dark urine, itchy skin, and stomach pain. WHO warned children aged 5 years old or younger have so far been the most widely affected by the disease. Though cases have been detected in children aged 1 month to 16 years, common symptoms including gastroenteritis such as diarrhea and nausea, followed by jaundice or yellowing of the skin and eyes. While the disease was first reported in January this year by the UK, followed by a dozen countries, the case in Japan raises concerns that the disease is spreading outside of Europe and the US. The US House of Representatives anonymously passed legislation on April 27 calling on the State Department to submit a plan to help Taiwan regain its observer status at the World Health Organization. Taiwan was stripped of this status in 2017. The House passed the bill 425 to 0 and sent it directly to the White House because it passed the Senate in August. It is expected for President Joe Biden to sign the measure into a law. China has opposed Taiwan's participation in the WHA. Democratic Representative Jerry Connolly praised Taiwan's response and achievement to the COVID-19 pandemic and said Taiwan's leadership and contribution to global health security demonstrate why it ought to be part of the global conversation on public health. The measure directs the Secretary of State to establish a strategy for obtaining observer status for Taiwan at the World Health Assembly. WHA is the decision-making body of the WHO. The bill said Taiwan remains a model contributor to world health. Taiwan's Ministry of Defense said on April 27 that it will test an all-out defense readiness subject to the incorporation between the regular army forces, coast guards, reservists, and civilian forces in dealing with the predator enemy in its annual Hanguang military exercise in May. The Ministry of Defense said the coming war game will also be held in the form of a mapping exercise, allowing generals to meet face-to-face to discuss strategies instead of using the computerized simulation method. The 
防护网。Military officials said portable javelin and stinger missiles, which have played an important role in destroying Russian tanks during the Ukraine war, were expected to be used. While military drones will also be employed to test the island's asymmetric warfare operation. Military tactics to be tested include eliminating invading forces at sea and along the coastline, preserving combat forces for a counterattack, and air, sea, and homeland resistance. EU announced on April 27th the 27-nation bloc will move from emergency mode to a more sustainable management of COVID-19. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said in a statement that they are needed to keep focus on vaccination. Testing and surveillance as it transitions out of an acute phase of COVID-19 pandemic. The focus will no longer be on mass reporting of all coronavirus cases, but rather on obtaining reliable and representative estimates. Brussels said the bloc's nations should use current low levels of infections to strengthen their surveillance, healthcare systems, and overall pandemic preparedness ahead of a possible fresh wave in the autumn. Officials call for stepping up booster jabs and continuing sequence sufficient samples to detect any new variants. European Commission Vice President Margaritas Skinas said that new variants are not a question of if, but rather a question of when. Improvisation and fragmentation are not an option. The Indian Meteorological Department predicts temperature rise in the northwest and east of India until the first weeks of May. Up to 46 Celsius is expected in New Delhi on April 28th, and 48 Celsius in Rajasthan. The department said such temperatures are normally experienced in May and June, but the heat wave began in March and is affecting the entire north. May promises to be even more challenging with sweltering temperatures and increased air pollution. In India, the meteorological department defines a heat wave as in excess of 40 degrees Celsius in the plains. 37 degrees Celsius in coastal areas and 30 degrees Celsius in the hills, and when temperatures are 4.5 degrees Celsius to 6.4 degrees Celsius above average, anything above a 6.4 degrees Celsius differential and in excess of 47 degrees Celsius is considered severe, and this has been the case for the last two months. From March 11th, New Delhi and about 15 states, including Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and even Himachal Pradesh in the Himalayas, were hit by heat wave. These regions on March recorded the warmest at 9 degrees Celsius above average. And that is all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us on Fun Day News. Let's make every day a fun day. I am Wade Lee, your host, and I'll see you next time.